All right, Dad, what game are we playing today? Today we are playing Apotheca. Apotheca, yeah. ooh. And this is a game, we've actually got a prototype version that it's not out final version yet, but I would say for a prototype version, as you can see, this looks fantastic. Uh, love the artwork, the style of this, it's fantastic. But as far as the game goes, big thumbs up on this game. It's got a good balance of uh, luck, strategy at least puzzly type strategy a light level of strategy which i like so the games don't take very long but you still get to think about it a little bit exercises your brain so overall uh, a thumbs up on this one and i'll show you a little bit more detail why all right so why don't you show me a bit how how it plays all right well i'll show you what we've got what we've got set up on the board we've got a board here in the center there's an initial setup for the cards it's random which ones are revealed we've got our other pile of potion cards so you can see here we're going to have a very, obviously shouldn't be looking, but we're going to have red, blue, and yellow, just like we have the gems here. Those are going to be shuffled together. We put out three different apothecaries from the apothecary draw deck here. Each of them is going to be next to a colored gem. Those are the colors that are going to let you purchase those apothecaries or hire those apothecaries. And everybody starts out with an apothecary of their own. So if we had a Let's say we got a three-player game going. There's going to be an apothecary out there, and this guy's going to have his over here. I'm going to have mine. What the apothecaries do is let you move things around on the board a little bit differently. That's the puzzly aspect of trying to get a few things in the order you want. So you can get three of the potions in a row. So on your turn, we've got a cool handy-dandy sheet here that shows what you can do. There's four different actions, and you must do two of the four actions, and they cannot be the same action. So for example, if I wanted to do reveal, what I do is I flip over one of the cards that's out here. One of these the face down cards, I'll flip over and I'll see, oh, it's blue. I get a blue gem, which I can use to purchase a little bit later. So on a second action, I could not do another reveal. A restock, what you can do for restock is put more of the potions out there. Now, if there are already three face down potions, you cannot restock. Right now there's two, so if I wanted to, I could restock. What that means is I'll take another one of these, I get a peek at it, see what color it is, and then I get to choose where on the board to place it. And so I can see, based off of wanting to get three in a row, you know, maybe I'm going to put this one right here. I will put this little arrow facing towards me, because anytime during the game, any of these with the arrow facing me, I can peek at to remember what they are, because they're going to be moving around on the board. The other thing you could do on your turn, is power. You could use the power of one of your apothecaries. So I'll show you what this one looks like. At least the one I have lets me take something from the side of the board and swap it with a potion in the center of the board. And it could be either face down. So for example, I could take this from the outside of the board and I could swap it with this one. Make those change places. So the cool thing about those apothecaries is giving you those different powers. And as you can see from different apothecaries here, there's not those that'll say, okay, you move this one spot, either direction, this one is swapping diagonal. This one, you move an entire row. You can shift a whole row, so I could shift this one down, all a row, and this one wraps around, but I don't have that card. So there's a whole variety, all of them are different. More are gonna come up as they get purchased, which I will show you next. So I can use the power of my apothecary, or I can hire another one. To hire another one of these, to get it in my in my deck or in my team, essentially I have to spend two of that color. So I would have to spend two blue gems in order to hire this apothecary. And now he goes with me. And a new one gets drawn, and you can see what that comes out to be. Or I could turn in one of each color to draw blindly from here and have that join my team. So that's how you can bring in new powers, new abilities, see what you're going to want to be able to do to maneuver things around. So, those are the things you can do on your turn, and then it moves to the next player. So, obviously, if you can't get three in a row, you're going to want to either set it up for yourself or thwart the next player. One thing we found in a two-player game, it's very easy to use your strategy to set up yourself for getting a few things in a row. There's not much you can do. In a three- or four-player game, there's going to be more uh, changes to the board state before it gets back to you. So, there's a little bit less strategy and more about just making the most of what you can on your turn. But what I really enjoy about it is the puzzly aspect of trying to figure out how to get things where you want them. So for example, this one that I put out was a blue. I knew it was a blue. I placed it there. 
If the next player then chooses to flip that over, he's going to get a blue gem, and if he had any way to move this blue into that row, he'd get set up. But based off of what I can see their abilities are, they really don't have the abilities to put that blue into the center there. And when they've only got two actions to take, you know, it's, it's pretty good to be able to set up so that they may be able to help you out a little bit, but you can still make your move. So those are some of the things I like. When you claim the potions, because you've got the three in a row, you actually use it to cover up one of your apothecaries. So now I cannot use this apothecary any more times in the game. So the downside of getting it is now you're going to have less actions to use. So the closer you get to winning, the harder it is to win. Yeah, because you're covering up some of those. You've got to keep buying more. So you're going to have to be turning over some, some of these to get more gems, bring it back into play. You may only be playing with a couple of these. If, for example, if I've only got one apothecary here, say he's covered up, and I was able to get another, I don't know what was out there. Let's see what we had. Say I was able to get another three in a row. I would still take those, but I have no apothecary to cover up, so I don't get to claim anything from those. Those get shuffled back into this deck, and I don't get a point. So even though I've got three in a row, I've got one, and I just made another one, I don't get to score that because I didn't have an apothecary to place it on. So it's a good balance that way. Uh, there's also ways to pull out you know, more than one at a time. If there was a red here, for example, and another red one that I draw, I take a look at. If it was my first action, I draw it. I can restock, put it out there. For my second action, I flip it over. We have four in a row. In addition to claiming those, get my apothecary back. I can claim those. I also get a gem. So that's another way to kind of double, double dip. So there's a number of cool things in there, um, but that's the essence of how you play it. Once you've claimed three, uh, potion sets for your apothecaries, then you win the game. Sounds fun. So what would you rate Apotheca? I would give it a, a solid four. A good four out of five. I like it because it's, uh, like I said, it's a little bit of puzzly. You get to figure out how to move things around. You get to take a look at what other people are able to do on theirs. You got a balance of just having two actions. So there's a lot of interplay back and forth. Uh, trying to thwart other people at the same time, trying to advance your own your own moves and try to guess what your opponents are going to be able to do. So I like that element of it. Like I said, with more players, the board state changes a little bit more as you go along. But I like that element of, as well. The games really don't take very long. Uh, I, you know, 10 to 15 minutes easily for a game, and then you can set it up and play again. So I like it. Some games... I guess can take a little bit longer depending on who you're playing against, but because you're just going to three, really, we find it does it does play through pretty quickly. So I like it, and everybody's engaged throughout the whole time. So good game. You got to go check it out. All right. Thanks, Dad.